We're here at Wicket 2012 in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates and I'm very pleased to be joined by Bernadette Lewis, who's Secretary General of the Caribbean Telecommunications Union. Bernadette, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. We're pretty much at the end of the Wicket process now. I wanted to find out what your opinions have been and what your impressions have been of Wicket 12. All right. Well, this is my first experience at a treaty level conference. It has been very, very interesting. Um, seeing how uh, so many different administrations could start off at different camps and the, in different camps and actually the process by which you work towards some consensus. We're getting there very slowly but the, it has been quite intense um, and I think it is because so many of the issues are complicated and diverse and um, just by virtue of the pace of technological innovation, it opens up so many questions and the prospect of what the future holds, you know, it also gives us a certain, uh, I suppose many of the administrations, a certain wariness about how they should position themselves in this particular treaty. What are the most pertinent points for the Caribbean region that are, that are going to be coming from this conference? Well, I think there has been the concern, and I, I suppose it is really because of the intense media attention that has been directed to this conference, um, that the internet uh, uh, is allowed to develop as it has been in the past. Many of our Caribbean governments have indicated their intention or their commitment to ICT-enabled development. And I am sure that they are concerned about many, anything that is going to increase the cost of, of communications and, and, and the internet and so on. All of those things have been occupying the minds of our Caribbean stakeholders. The issues of security, right? the fact that many of our members in the, within the CTU are small island states. Um, small island developing states, uh, these are some of the things that they would have been very interested in coming into the, the meeting. And what do you see as being the most positive aspects of Wicket 12? Well, I think the, the, what I did like from the, the very beginning, I think, was the uh, intention of the ITU to work in a more collaborative way and uh, participating more in this multi-stakeholder process that is really the, the basis of which, on which the internet is, it unfolds or evolves. And I thought that was an excellent um, uh, statement. And the fact that you had uh, uh, Fadi Jihadi of the ICANN at the opening ceremony, I, say, I think that, that uh, bodes well for the, for the future. So I thought that was one of the really uh, very good things that, that were, were one of the things that was expressed very early in the game. There's also been a lot of discussion about transparency here. What have been your impressions of that? By the way, I was the chairman of the working group, uh, one of the working groups charged with looking at the ITRs and uh, the issue of transparency from uh, the work that we were given it had to do with that of roaming and you know what happens to when people travel and they're not aware of the costs or the prices of the roaming services that, that they utilize and the whole issue of bill, bill shock. Um, that was dealt with and um, we're very happy with the outcome. I think people need to be aware of, of the, the sort of uh, costs they're incurring when they, they travel. So that was one great aspect of it. Um, the discussions have been very open, just generally now, with respect to the, the, the conduct of the conference. There have been, the, the discussions have been very open and I'm, I'm very pleased with how things are unfolding. Why do you think this particular conference attracted so much public attention? I think, as I said earlier, because of the media attention it received, uh, there was a lot of press, uh, a lot of media reports in terms of uh, threats to the internet. It could come under governmental control, it could come under the ITU's control. We don't want, you know, all of the, these fears uh, were being played out in the public domain, in the press. And I think that um, it, and, and I, I'm very sure as, as well that there was a strong private sector lobby, right? And um, the 
this has really, I think, put people in very definite camps. And even before the discussion started, right, so they would have had entrenched positions. But I think that we are seeing there are a number of very thorny issues that need to be resolved, but we are working our way towards getting some sort of re resolution. And at the end of the day, I don't think anybody wants to leave Dubai without having uh, a revised document that they could take back. It would be most unfortunate if we do not come to some consensus by the end of the week. Well, let's hope so. Thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good to be here.